Hello, my dear friends. Uh, today we are celebrating the second Sunday of Advent, and my sermon today is actually based upon the epistle appointed for this Sunday coming to us from St. Paul's epistle to the Romans in the 15th chapter. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, certainly as we began to speak about last week, in the first week of, first Sunday of Advent, I should say, bear in mind this same theme continues on, especially in the regard that once again the church has, just like last week, the church has chosen a reading from St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans. And keep in mind, as is so often the case, if you will, with the various epistles or letters that were written in the New Testament by St. Paul especially, bear in mind that he is writing to the various churches, this time obviously the young church at Rome. But as is the case, is the point I'm trying to make, as is the case with so many of these young churches, one of the constant threads or one of the constant themes, if you will, or, or what all these churches had in common, other than their belief in, in Christianity and following our blessed Savior, obviously. But one of the th common denominators that each of these young churches had was they were filled with people who were, in essence, Jewish converts, and bear in mind, as we've spoken about before, and I might have even mentioned last week, bear in mind the Jews back then, just like the Jews of today, but especially the Jews back then, certainly they were awaiting the Messiah. They were awaiting the coming of the Messiah. And of course, bear in mind, they had a preconceived notion, if you will, of what the Messiah was going to be like. They were expecting the Messiah to be a, 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 a great warrior, someone of great strength, someone of great stature. They were expecting this mighty warrior to come charging in on a, a, a great mighty stallion, a, a beautiful horse, and certainly surrounded by a, perhaps a great and massive army as well. With, with banners flying and flags flying, etc., etc. And they were expecting this Messiah to come and save them. Well, certainly what happened was that basically the, the Messiah, as we know as Christians, the Messiah, yes, did come, but the Messiah did not come in the form that they were expecting. And we can't really... We can't really, at least in my opinion, if we were in those shoes or whatever, if we lived 2,000 some years ago, and if we were in that in that age in which our blessed Savior was born, and we didn't know the story, so to speak, I would dare say we would probably expect the same thing. And we would just be just as surprised, if not more. But anyways, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. In essence, what, again... St. Paul is writing to the Romans, just as we discussed last week, was he was trying to show hope to the church. Now, bear in mind, let me read to you once again what I read to you a little bit ago. This is from the 15th chapter. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope. Hope is a wonderful thing. Certainly, and as I stated last week, bear in mind, the Old Testament prophets, again, while on the one hand, they were pointing out all the things that were wrong with Israel, all the things that were wrong with Judah, they were pointing out the wrong things that the people did. But on the other hand, the Old Testament prophets were also interested in showing hopefulness, and this is what St. Paul is talking about. He is talking about being a people of hope. Now, this next verse that I want to read to you is actually not from Romans, but rather the first epistle written to the Corinthians, this time in the 15th chapter and the 19th verse. Now, listen to this verse very carefully. It begins, 
if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Let me read that to you again, just in case you weren't paying attention, because it sounds very, it sounds strange if you just read that verse by itself. If in this life, St. Paul writes, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable, St. Paul states. Now, again, as I, as I said a little bit ago, as I alluded to, certainly this is a strange thing for St. Paul to, to write. If you just take this verse in and of itself, by itself, certainly it, it, it sounds pessimistic at best. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Well, let me read you the, the following verse, verse 20, and see if it makes more sense. He continues, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. In essence, what Paul is getting at is if we only have hope and nothing further than hope, then what does that matter? Excuse me, what does that matter? What does it mean? It if I can just point this out, this analogy, and, and I think it'll show exactly what I'm talking about. I personally am not much of a, of a handyman. In other words, I, I'm not very good with my hands, admittedly. I'm, I'm the first one that will admit that. And so when I have to fix things around the house, I, I say my prayers, saying, and then I say, oh, I hope this is going to work. I hope this is going to, you know, last, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Because, again, I'm not much of a handyman. And so what invariably happens is that if I fix something while I'm saying, oh, I hope this is going to work, I hope this is going to work, I hope this is going to work, and then it falls apart, well, then what did my hope mean? It didn't amount to much, did it? Of course I had hope that my little project would work out. I had hope that it would last. But it fell apart. So I had to go back to the drawing board and stall, start all over. Again, in that instance, in that analogy, my hope, I had hope that it would work out, but my hope didn't, was, didn't amount to more than that. It was hope. Hopefulness that my project would last. And it didn't. This is sort of what St. Paul is stating when he writes to the Corinthians in his first epistle to them. He's saying, look, if you only have hope, and that's a good thing to have hope, don't get me wrong, St. Paul is saying, don't get me wrong, that's good to have hope. We are a people of hope, he acknowledges. But if your hope doesn't amount to anything more than hope, what is it? And so St. Paul, that's why he follows up in that verse, pointing out that, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. St. Paul was reminding the Corinthians as St. Paul was reminding us. Yes, we are a people of hope, but yet the reason for our hopefulness is our risen Savior. The reason for our hopefulness is our blessed Savior. The reason for our hopefulness is God who loves his children so much that he gave his only begotten Son not only to become born at Bethlehem as a small, tiny, innocent baby, but yet, further than that, he grew into a man that carried his cross to the hill of Calvary and died on that cross. And as a result, he died but was risen again. And so as a result, death no longer, as St. Paul says, Death no longer has its sting to us human beings because Christ, as he says here, Christ is the first fruits of death being defeated. Christ defeated death by rising from death. Christ, he defeated death, something that you and I could never hope to achieve on our own. So again, going back to the premise the gist of what I'm trying to get at is, yes, Christians are hopeful people. Christians have hope with inside, but 
It goes beyond hope because our hope is based on God and God never lets us down is the bottom line. Elsewhere we hear in the New Testament, this time in the epistle written to the Hebrews in the 6th chapter in the 19th verse, St. Paul writes, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. As I like to say so often in my sermons and when I teach and so forth, the world, you have to understand, they find their anchor in worldly things. They find something that they can set their faith on worldly-wise. In other words, whether it be drink or titles or possessions or the house in which they live or the fancy clothes in which they wear, etc., etc., etc. For the Christian, though, our anchor is God. For the Christian, of course, our anchor is our blessed Savior. He is the one that we are anchored in that keeps us safe and secure, that keeps us in place. If you've ever gone out on a boat or, an, or if you've ever seen a, a ship or, or what have you, and you see these great big huge anchors, and if, you, if you've ever been on a, a, a boat or whatever where you've been out on a lake or something like that, so you, you, you get the anchor and you throw it overboard so it'll help to hold you in place. That's what we need in this world, you understand. That's what we need in our life. We need an anchor that will secure us in place. And our anchor for the Christian, for the devout Christian, for the devout faithful Christian, is our relationship with the Almighty. Our relationship with God, our relationship with His Son, our relationship with the Holy Ghost. You see, the three persons of the Trinity. And so as a result... We know that we are not anchored in this world because the things in this world, the, the, there, there's nothing secure in this world. Things come and things go. Something that's wonderful and, and fantastic one day is, is passe and, and it's, it's gone. It's, it's, it's worthless the next. You understand, don't you? Of course. And then finally, going back to Paul's St. Paul's epistle to the Romans, but this time earlier in the chapter in the book, we find in the eighth chapter in the 24th verse, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, yet why doth he yet hope for? What St. Paul is saying in this verse is what I was stating earlier. Hope is something that is unseen. If we have hope, we haven't seen the, uh, the efforts yet. We haven't seen the end results, in other words. Going back to the analogy of me with my trying to fix things around the house. I hope when I fix this window that it'll stay together. I hope when I fix this door. I hope, et cetera, et cetera. I hope that it's going to work out, but yet I haven't seen the end results once I see the end results and it did work, yay, then it's not hopefulness anymore. It's, it's what happened. That's what St. Paul is stating. That's what St. Paul is stating. We as Christians, we do not, we are a people of hope, but yet our hope has already been seen. Our hope has already been experienced. We know through faith that our blessed Savior has died on the cross and risen on the third day. We know that he is the same Lord and Savior who's promised, I go before you to prepare you a mansion so that you will have a place. All we have to do for our part is to believe and then state yes with our mouth, but more importantly with our lives. As human beings, we certainly know that we will not be, if you will, will not be perfect. Human beings are not perfect. We make mistakes. We fall short of the glory of God, you see. We're human beings. 
That's why God sent his only begotten son into the world to save us from our sins, from our shortcomings.